countries are not able to sustain the borrowings that they've been making. Do you think that can again change the picture in favor of emerging markets? Uh, that's hard to say because, you know, this is a very dynamic sort of environment that people are dealing with. I think the challenge in India, uh, as far as investors are concerned, uh, will continue to be the, in, uh, you know, interplay of inflation, interest rates and the investment cycle. And that is what will really determine the relative attractiveness of India. Unfortunately, uh, from a valuation standpoint, uh, the premium that India is trading at relative to other comparable emerging markets or to other developed markets still remains relatively high. So uh, I'm not sure it's as simple as saying if things go wrong in Europe, it would necessarily be good for India. It may or may not be the case. Right, Vetri, one final question. What's the mood among uh, the retail investors? Are they continuing to invest? Are they, uh, you know, getting scared out there as far as their mutual fund investments are concerned? Uh, are things, uh, you know, things were beginning to look better after six months, uh, you know, where things weren't as good for the industry. But uh, are you seeing, uh, again, some element of fear creeping in there? Or uh, is the investor mature enough continuing to be that three or five year investment I need to just go on? Uh, it's been a mixed bag uh, in that sense, Vivek. Uh, you know, the industry has not really seen anything significant by way of net inflows for more than a year now, as you would be aware from the published data. Uh, but we have seen, you know, I think uh, the retail investor uh, who's looking to deploy surplus, uh, you know, continuing to come into the mutual fund industry in a, uh, you know, significant way with his small investments. And perhaps the aggregate number, which is still reflecting net outflows, uh, reflects a lot of the redemptions that are happening, happening from larger investors who'd invested, uh, you know, perhaps at the peak of the markets in 2007, 2008. Uh, so it's a little bit of a mixed picture. It's a two-way street. Uh, but is the industry adding assets at an aggregate level as yet in equities? Uh, no, the data doesn't indicate that. Uh, we're quite happy that we are adding uh, the number of investors to our overall kitty at this point of time, but uh, the corpus is not really growing and that uh, is an issue for concern. I would also point out that, you know, really over the last one year, if you look at it, uh, the effective interest rates that Indian investors can earn on fixed uh, uh, return investment avenues has gone up very dramatically. Uh, you know, maybe a year ago they could get returns of just about 5% on a one-year FD. Today, you know, if you drive around Mumbai City, all you'll see is holdings from banks offering 9 to 10% on fixed deposits. So I think from a local investor perspective, when you've got returns on, uh, you know, fixed income going up to almost double-digit levels, it is going to put pressure in terms of the inflows that they might otherwise direct into equities. Mm, but what about debt funds? Are they seeing uh, good traction even coming from retail investors? We've seen some signs of that, but unfortunately, I think most fixed income products have tended to be more institutional than retail. We recently uh, launched a fund which was, you know, targeted at medium-term investors, uh, the Relegate medium-term plan. We did see some interest coming in from retail investors, but I think there's a lot more challenges there in terms of just educating the public. And, you know, I think a lot of the mutual funds, including us, are out there doing that. And hopefully that will result in a significant, you know, transfer of funds from the banking industry to the mutual fund side. But it's a process that will take years, uh, but we are reasonably optimistic that it will happen.